Hey guys, CPC guy here, and we're gonna be looking at overclocking with Other Brothers OC Scanner. If you are thinking you already have that video up, yes, I do, but that video had a lot of issues, sound levels, and I just dragged on with useless information for kind of a while. So this will be more concise, more to the point, and just letting you people know how to do it quickly, nicely, and easily. For those of you unfamiliar, Afterburner lets you overclock your GPU to get better results out of it all well, for free. So you basically get free performance with your GPU at the cost of a little bit of extra power consumption and it's perhaps running a little bit hotter. It does require some testing to make sure it's stable. But the OC scanner, its purpose is to make it simple, automatic, and you won't get as much of a boost as you would with normal overclocking, but you will get some boost and it will just do it for you. And from my experience, it's pretty stable and pretty reasonable. And it doesn't really push it as far as it could, but for those of you afraid to manually overclock things, this is a pretty good solution. The only thing I will say before we start are a few details that people often ask. One, what cards can use this on? You can use this on both AMD and NVIDIA cards going back several years, so it's probably pretty much universally compatible with any card and you can overclock with any card. For OC Scanner in particular, for NVIDIA you will have to have a card that is from the 10 series or higher. Otherwise, you'll have to just manual overclock and not use the OC scanner function. Other thing that people often ask is putting the sliders to the max from the voltage and power limit, is that not going to fire GPU? The answer to that is no. Your GPU has its BIOS settings, it has its BIOS limitations, and the slide just gives you a bit of an offset, but it will not go past the limitations that your GPU has in its BIOS. So you don't have to worry about that. The only thing that you will do is let your GPU, if it needs it, get that extra power and that extra voltage. If it's not being necessary, it is also not going to be consumed. And no, it will not go to a catastrophic failure because there are safeguards in the BIOS for that, both in terms of temperatures and in terms of the voltage and power draw. Now, with that little forewarning out of the way, how do you get into Afterburn and get the overclocking started? You need to obviously turn it on and install it. You will head to the settings and you have to unlock voltage control, otherwise, you will not be able to adjust the power limit and the core voltage to your GPU. You can still overclock even with that off, obviously, but you are severely limiting yourself and you are not going to get as much of a result as you would otherwise. Once you do that, you are going to have to slide the core voltage and the power limit all the way to the max. In this case, mine already at the max. My card is limited at 100% power limit and 100% voltage. It will depend on which card you actually have, if you can go further or not. Depends by brand, depends by each model of each brand. So it's very, very on a case by case basis, depending on what card you have. Now for the overclocking itself, you go here and then you click on this little icon next to where it says core clock. There is a little icon that if your card is, uh, well, compatible, you'll be able to see it and it will pop up this little voltage slash curve, uh, voltage frequency curve editor that you can just, you could technically do it yourself. But what we're interested in is here, the OC scanner. Clicking on the OC scanner, you'll be able to test and scan your CPU. So let's go ahead and get the process started. So if you have all three of these sliders to the max, including the voltage control and monitoring in the settings that I mentioned earlier, it's time for you to click on scan and get the process started. It will test your graphics card at different points of the voltage uh, frequency curve, find a stable point as high as possible and set your card to that. Like I said, it is not as thorough as manual overclocking. It will not get you as far, but it is a very easy easy to use alternative that is, I found, pretty stable and pretty reliable. So after roughly three and a half minutes, as you can see, the scan has finished and succeeded and has set the auto overclock to 49 megahertz. I have personally been able to get it to almost double of this. So like I said, this is not as far as you can take it. It's just a safe overclock for beginners, let's say. The dominant limit is power because like you see here, my power limit does not go above 100%. That is because of the card that I have. You might be able to personally get it higher depending on what card you have, what brand you have, and what model of card you have. After you are done with the scanning, feel free to press test. This will test the overclocking for stability and it will give you a number at the end telling you if it's stable or not. Anything above 70-ish is pretty stable and stable enough. If you are under the 60 or something, you probably uh, could lower it down a little bit, but I have personally not seen anything under 90%, which is pretty great. 
So after 5 minutes of testing the test has concluded and again like I mentioned confidence level is 90% it says so that is actually pretty decent and you are free to just leave your overclock like this. Now something to keep in mind is that this overclocks your core clock but it does not touch the memory clock. So for the memory you will have to do your own overclocking manually. I would advise to start it slow going like increments of 50 or 100 and then once you get artifacts or issues on your screen then dial it back from there. I have my own overclock at 1100 megahertz. This is pretty reasonable. It's not stellar but it is stable and it is an improvement in any case so again for the memory clock go in small increments test it if you see nothing wrong with your graphics card then dial it back a little bit more you can also do the same for the core clock mind you can dial it up slightly increments and test it and see if you can push it further however i would not do memory and core clock at the same time i would do one first and then the other start with core clock get it to the max you can and then get the memory clock up from there as far as testing i would recommend you using something like unigen uh, or 3d mark that sort of benchmarking software to really push the graphics card and see if you have artifacts a fur mark is also pretty good by the way so that's a few free options that you have to actually test the stability of your overclock unfortunately that it does not do memory as well however as you can see it is not really difficult this is pretty much a noob guide to overclocking if you have never overclocked a gpu this is a good starting point get the baseline with oc scanner try to increase it a little bit test it for stability with the software i mentioned if it is fine test it up a little bit more. If you start seeing weird stuff happening on your screen, just dial it back to where it was stable and then do the same with the memory until you max it out as good as possible. If you in the future have issues with stability, then that means that you probably have a little bit too much, so dial it back a little bit more until it's stable again. In any case, it's free performance and it's pretty easy. I'll leave links to the benchmarking software and the stress testing software down in the description below so you are free to download them. They're free to use so no costs there either and you will have free performance with your GPU without paying a dime. Hope this has been useful for you guys that want to overclock your GPU, get a bit of extra performance and well if you have enjoyed the video drop a comment and a like it really helps with the YouTube algorithm for the video to get more visibility and for my channel to get a little bit more tra uh, traffic so if there is a way that you would like to thank for the help then well that is it give us some more visibility we're a small channel and we would love to grow. Similarly, if you enjoy this kind of content, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you'll get warned for more videos from our channel. Anything helps and we are extremely thankful for your support. This has been Edic PC Guy. Hope I'll see you in our other videos in the future. Have a good day. Enjoy your free GPU FPS increase. I have another video comparing uh, the difference between an overclocked and non-overclocked GPU if you would like to see how much the difference is and how much frame rate you are gaining in gaming for example. So check that out. I'll put it in the card up here so you can check it out later. Have fun and I hope I'll see you next time.